Hi everybody, it's Franny, and since I've had this Beck Spider in the garage for a bit, I thought it might be kind of fun to do a proper walk around and a little bit of a review. This is a 1991 Beck Spider, making it one of their earlier cars, I believe. It's a beautiful car in its build. Uh, the body is wonderful. It's all made out of fiberglass. But the cool thing about Beck's is this three inch tubular steel frame that they use on the cars. So this is not made from a Volkswagen pan body that's been chopped and shortened and all that. It's made very close to the original design actually. Of course the original 550 Spiders from Porsche were made out of aluminum and hand hammered over a wooden buck. But, and these are fiberglass, but um, it's just a beautiful reproduction. Now as far as the rest of the car goes, the running gear on the car is standard Volkswagen actually. It has a multi-link Volkswagen front end on it, so halfway between the Kingpins and Linkpins and then the McPherson strut, they had that multi-link front end. That's what this car has. In the back, we have a 1915cc air-cooled Type 1 VW engine, which runs really well, uh, breathing through a couple of DeLordo carburetors, which is kind of neat. It is sitting amidship, just as the original was, and tran transmission is in the back. So very, very true to the original design that way. We have a um, standard sort of torsion bar rear end on the car, and all of this makes the car drive very similar to, I would believe, the original. Although I've never driven the original. I've stood next to one before, but I've never actually had a ride in one. But judging by the running gear and the weight, you know, these things only weigh like 1300 pounds. They're very light. The engine puts out a decent amount of power, about 120 horsepower or so. So it gets right along. It's, it's quick, but it's not fast, if that makes any sense. So it gets out of its own way very well, but its top speed is probably a little bit low, maybe 80 or 90 miles an hour, but it doesn't have much aero, so you probably wouldn't want to go much faster than that anyways. It's not really for that. So this car would be for sort of a weekend car, kind of a fun, going to car shows, driving, bombing around town. The original 550 Spiders for Porsche made. They only made 90 of those cars, and all but two or three of them have the four cam engine in them. Put all that together, and the racing history from Porsche, and those cars are well over two and a half, three million at this point, maybe even more. So that's kind of nice about this car. Is you get you get so much of the look and so much of the feel of the original but at a way small fraction of the price. I believe a brand new turnkey Beck Spider is somewhere around 40, and I think you can get uh, a really nice used one, even with, maybe with a 356 engine in it, for somewhere around 35 and a little lower than that, and you get the Volkswagen engine. I know they have options to go all the way up to a Subaru engine, which would be pretty darn powerful, but I think it'd be a bit much for this. The whole point of these things, and the whole point that Porsche put these together for, was a light car with a small engine can be beat a very big car, heavy car, with a big engine. That was the idea. Light and agile and quick to throw itself out of turns. It doesn't need as much um, running gear on it. It's The brakes don't have to be as crazy. Nothing has to be that crazy, so you keep all the weight down. You don't need that much power, and it's really up to the driver to drive the crap out of these cars. So this one is actually pretty, I think it's pretty close to the original in weight and all that sort of stuff and driving dynamics. The dash closely resembles the original as well, minus this steering wheel that's on it. But the gauges are all VDO gauges, and it's very, very nice. In kilometers per hour, we've got our rev counter right there in the center, and then we've got our combi gauge over there, which is all standard 550 Spider 356 of this era. Kind of cool, we have our ignition switch there. We have a little push button ignition switch to go with the keyed switch. The shifter for the Volkswagen transmission down here is kind of standard Volkswagen fare, but if it's adjusted properly, it shifts really, really well. Pedals, of course, all hinged on the floor as they should be. And the seats here are standard bucket seats that you would find in a Speedster or a 550 Spider. They look the part. 
They're actually pretty comfortable too. Up under the front, we have quite a bit of room actually. There's quite a bit of storage space up here. I believe the gas tank here is a kind of aftermarket Volkswagen. It's all metal with that wonderful fill right there in the center. And the back side of the deck lid, it's all fiberglass. It's very well made. It seems quite strong and not flimsy at all. It's a nice piece. For the front wheels, we have disc brakes, which is kind of nice. I believe them to be Volkswagen disc brakes, but they seem to stop the car just fine. Something I really like about these Becks is they did spend a lot of time on the running hardware. Look at that. It really looks the part. And of course the original lights here as well, the very VW, but that's pretty much what was on these cars, very similar, so they look great. Talk a little bit about this windshield. It looks like it's a Speedster, reproduction Speedster windshield with the aluminum surround all the way around, which is really nice. And it very much looks the part. I believe the original 550s actually had small little plexiglass windshields, but driving on the road with this car and the type of driving you would be doing with it, unless you're going to track it, you really want a little more substantial windshield. And this is a, this one looks great and really looks like a vintage Porsche. One thing I'd like to point out about the engine and transmission back here is they do not drop down underneath the car if you need to get them out like a standard Volkswagen would be. They must come out through the top and which means you have to take clamshell off and you need a cherry picker to kind of work this thing out and that's the only way to get the whole thing out but I was able to do um, a top end and pull the heads off this engine and get them out to the machine shop and get them back with the engine still in. So that is actually kind of a bonus. It's a little bit tight and took a little bit of wingling to get the heads completely off, but it can be done while it's in the car. And you have so much access to the carburetors, to the spark plugs, they're super easy to change. Doing valves is a snap. You can get to the distributor, you can get to the generator, you can get to all of it quite easily actually. So unless you had something really major going on and you needed to pull the engine out for some like bottom end issue, you really don't need to. It's totally accessible. This is very much a driver's car. So let's go ahead and get it out on the road and see what it's like. First impressions in this car, it's super loud. So with that exhaust back there, it's really loud. You can hear it. We're going down a hill, just out of the hood, popping away like that. I mean, that's I think probably what I've heard in vintage uh, video of the race cars did exactly the same thing. So it kind of sounds like the original too, a little. to drive. At these slower speeds, it's actually very easy to drive. The steering's a lot lighter than you might think. The car's very light, so the steering's very light. This little bitty steering wheel is fine for the car, actually, as far as its size. Brakes are great. Car stops in a straight line. You feel pretty confident with the brakes, especially with those um, with those disc brakes up front. well. What about the suspension? What's that like? It actually feels really good. It's light. 
the whole car, like I said, the car's are really light, but the suspension feels light, but commutative, but not super commutative. It's actually a really nice mix, especially with this smaller steering wheel. It's a comfortable ride. It's not bangy or harsh at all. And as a convertible, it's not overly windy in here. We don't have a windscreen in the back, so there's a bit of wind coming forward, but it's really not bad at all. The engine's pretty responsive back there, easy to rev match and such. You know, you can really feel that this is mid-engine. As it, as it goes into turns and as it kind of plants itself into the turns, you can feel it has a lower polar, polar moment of inertia and it wants to think about pivoting on the engine and you don't have that big weight swinging around out back. I know why they made these things mid-engine. production of another car it's still very pretty and it's just a beautiful day to be out with the top down it loves doing that it does a good job at it too it's really a great time it really is it's got so much theater to it you got all the pops and crackles in the back thing makes a lot of noise as it takes off it just feels great and it all feels really tight it's pretty neat oh boy yeah it feels solid you know, a corner is super flat too. That's nice. You can feel it kind of pulling on the sidewalls even. Oh, this is just a great Saturday afternoon car. It really is. Yeah, baby. It is a who 
like to drive. It really is. It's a lot of fun. on the car I think it's a great little car it's a really fun but it is kind of a toy you really it's not super duper practical I guess you could go somewhere but it's awfully loud so I don't know if that's a thing or not this one's super loud but um, it's pretty usable reliable it's inexpensive and so you could not drive a, a real Porsche 550 Spider. You just can't. The thing's worth way too much money, and the engine is about as finicky as you can possibly imagine. So, you know, you're kind of stuck with this kind of replica thing, and as a replica goes, Beck builds a beautiful piece. They really do. Great fiberglass body. It looks the part. It's solid. It looks, I mean, it's just really well built. And then Beck puts in this wonderful tubular steel frame in it. That's super sweet. Since the thing doesn't weigh that much, it doesn't need a lot of heavy running gear. It doesn't need much power. So the little VW engine back there does a great job. It's plenty of power. I think it's giving you a very authentic feel uh, to what it, what the original car was probably like. And I'm, you know, I'm not one to completely ring out a car, and certainly not on public streets. But it's it's really fun. You can go around corners good and fast. And there's lots of theater with it. a very fun little car to drive. Well, I hope you like this little review and walk around of this Beck 550 Spider. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Until next time, safe travels. Bye.